Good evening, Bill. How are you? Hey, I'm good, Tamika. How are you doing? Awesome. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy, Happy New Year. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so um, this evening, Liz is going to be a tad bit late. No. Because she's in no, a I'm, I'm on a call there. Okay, the life of a, a, a signing agent. So she will come on, you know, shortly. But I'm here, so we're going to start this party on time. Bill, we are so excited to have you. Our first nugget of the year, and it's you! <laughs> we're so excited. I'm so super man, excited to be here, too. man that needs no introduction. Bill Soroka, notary coach. You got two books. We want to hear all about it. So take it away. <laughs> Take it away. Oh, boy. Lots of pressure. Well, I'm, I'm so honored to be here. I love what you and Liz are creating. You know, um, I think, is there a way, Tamika, that you can mute everybody out? Because we got... Well, here's the thing. There's, we're just going to have to um, ask them to mute themselves because if I mute everyone, it's going to mute you as well. That's my issue. And we want to hear you. <laughs> I'm much better in silent mode, trust me. So could everyone just mute yourselves? And we will have time for question and answers, but right now we just want to give Bill the floor. Well, thank you guys. I, um, you know, I'm here. I think we're going to talk about uh, the power of LinkedIn and what it can do to help grow your business. Uh, it really ties into the daily dues. Uh, that I, I've been advocating for uh, for years since I started this business because that is exactly the steps I took to kind of dig myself out of a hole and make this business work for me. So, um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi. I love all the uh, friendly faces, friendly messages in there. Thank you so much. So, um, I didn't necessarily have... Oh, hi. Hi. I didn't necessarily have a presentation uh, prepared for today. Um, I'm looking. <laughs> okay. All right. If you, uh, if you know how to put yourself on mute, please put yourself on mute. Uh, we'll do a Q&A. In fact, we might want to do a Q&A first. But even before we ju jump into that, guys, the, uh, the reason Liz asked me to be on here is because this, of this book right here. It is the second book that we wrote, and we wrote that with Sandra Long. And the reason for that is that many mobile notaries and loan signing agents skip over LinkedIn as an asset to growing their business. And I have been able to grow a multiple six figure. When I say multiple six figure, I mean $100,000 is the six figure mark. I've been able to grow it to over 300,000 as a regular mobile notary and loan signing agent using the strategies from my daily dues, the morning mastery, and using LinkedIn. LinkedIn was a major source for that because what is LinkedIn comprised of? It is packed with tools. It is packed with tools. Hey, Tamika. I'm doing it. Go ahead and just mute everybody and, and then, then send, you. And send me an invite to unmute. To mute, unmute, or okay, unmute I'll right. do that. Thumbs up, stretch. I'm not doing that to hide. Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> that that is our world right now. Are you on mute? I, I shouldn't be. Hold on. Oh, not, I can hear you. I can hear okay. you. Okay. One second. Okay, did you get the invite? I think it's just you and I now. All right, cool beans. All right. So LinkedIn is a huge resource of virtually every single 
person that you would consider to be your ideal customer as a mobile notary and loan signing agent. So whether you're doing loan signings, whether you're going to focus just on uh, regular general notary or specialty notary work with attorneys, with tow yards, with um, hospital administration, senior living centers, whatever it is, they probably have a presence on LinkedIn. So focusing on LinkedIn, number one, establishing a profile that you can be proud of, and then reaching out, communicating, and exchanging ideals, information, resources with that network is really going to serve you well. It's everybody that you could possibly imagine to be your best customer right here with you. And it's super underrated. And it's not only underrated to notaries, it's underrated across the board. It has a reputation of just being this electronic resume. And that's a huge mistake in any industry. But with notaries, we can tap into that. And as I was saying, the relationships that I've been able to cultivate and build just by interacting and inter uh, getting introduced to various escrow officers, sometimes it's HR managers that work for title companies that make the introductions for me, whatever it might be, that has led to multiple six-figure income with that one resource. So it's extremely valuable. Now, um, I already wrote a book on it. We've already talked about it. Many of you know about it already, but I, I know that there's probably lots of questions about how to actually implement it. Or uh, one of the big questions that we get all the time is we have multiple streams of revenue, revenue as mobile notaries. Some of us are wedding officiants. Some of us are no, the notary public, the loan signing agents, we are insurance agents, we're real estate agents, all of those things and how to blend those businesses. So does anybody have any specific questions about that? Look at that, the, the marriage notary wedding has their hand I up. I know, I right saw there. it. I love it. So Tamika, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Do you wanna open it up to Q and A right now? How do you wanna handle this? Hey, this is your show. I'm just moderating it. So we can we can do questions and answers. Do you want to just have them put it in the chat? I think that would be easier. Yeah, whatever works for you. Okay. This so is this is your <laughs> you and Liz show. I'm just here to help you out. Whatever you guys right. need. So uh, you can go ahead and um, if you have a question, just put it in the chat. And then uh, the marriage notary wedding. Do you want to unmute and let her ask her question? Since she's here. There she is. She wrote. Raise your hand. I think I, did I unmute you? Did it work? I think so. I, oh, I can't hear her though. You're not muted. Yeah, I might be having some problem. No problem. Let's, uh, let's jump into the chat here. Um, so, oh, she's asking, what do you think about the PDF resume feature? Um, well, honestly, I don't know much about it. Um, I think it can, if we're going to relate it to our business, what I have learned is there are very few people that find value in a PDF res or a, just a paper resume. There are people who do because it's kind of, the industry or the uh, the world that we live in where resumes used to mean something and they still do in some worlds, but in ours, they don't. So even if you create a resume, if you create a paper resume, you turn it into a PDF and it's downloadable from LinkedIn, whatever it is, that's going to serve you for sure. If it is an option available, we should absolutely take it. But where your real power in LinkedIn comes is that summary, your narrative about how you talk about, why you're passionate about what you do, what makes you amazing at what you do, uh, as well as a little bit of your work history and how you blend those together. And then remember that 80-20 rule. You are going to do 80% interacting with other people, providing value to other people, adding your two cents and your opinion to other people, 
uh, they're posting questions all the time on LinkedIn and other social media formats. Participating and adding value to them 80% of the time and then 20% of the time uh, posting, maybe it's promoting, self-promotion. Maybe it's special offers that you have. Maybe it's about you and your passionate journey. That balance is what makes you very powerful on LinkedIn. The challenge that we have, guys, is that social media across the board, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, no matter what it is, we are surrounded and inundated with bad examples of how to use social media every day. We have every company under the umbrella, any umbrella, just advertising all the time. So it's just one message after message after message talking about their services, trying to sell you something. And that's going to work for a very limited number of people. It's the easy way out. And it's, it's, a, it's a lazy way of social media interaction. The, the way that takes more effort is the way we talk about in the book. It's, the, it's interacting, it's giving of yourself, it's scheduling time to answer questions. And then every now and then, throwing in a, uh, a self-promotion, an offer, because you have, you, if you're in this business for the right reason, you have something to offer. You are going to help people and there's nothing wrong with that, but you've got to establish that people work with who they know, like, and trust. You have to put the time and energy into that before you sell them something. Okay. So I see she listens, has her hand raised. So I'm going to unmute. Samantha. Hey, Bill. How's it going? It's excellent. Thank you. Uh, and good evening to everybody from the East Coast. It is uh, a little after eight. Um, thank you, Miss Head, Miss Tamika, for you all putting this together on this evening. Uh, my question for Bill is, um, what are your thoughts or does the book talk a little bit about the difference between or the importance of having a personal LinkedIn page and a business LinkedIn page um, in the event that you, you know, have two separate platforms or should you just have one combined page? Yeah, great question. And the book does talk about this, luckily. But the way, the way LinkedIn is structured is you will always have just one personal page, one personal profile. And from there, you can have business pages as well, kind of similar to Facebook but you should only have a personal profile that is a individual human being. You should not have a profile that was designed to be an individual and make that your business. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see on LinkedIn. And I get uh, connection requests from people who are individuals, but they put in a business name. And I usually turn those down because that's using LinkedIn wrong. So you should have absolutely, no matter what your opinion is of it, if you're going to be on social media, if you're going to be on LinkedIn, then do it the right way. You should be an individual on LinkedIn. And then there is the opportunity to build business pages on top of that. To be honest, I don't think business pages on LinkedIn has gained the traction that it has the potential to do, but it's still a good idea to incorporate because Remember, there's a lot of background power to LinkedIn, and a lot of it is the search engine optimization. So the more posts you have or links or comments or posts, or whatever content is what it comes down to, you're going to get traffic driven to you. When people Google, LinkedIn really pops up strong. So you want to have that business page as well as your individual page. But don't skip the individual page. I think that's what people are doing. You know, we don't want our face on social media. Sometimes we uh, we have personal security or personal information issues, whatever it is. But if you're going to choose to be on it, you got to use it the way it was intended to use and be that have a personal profile. No matter what, people are only doing business with people. They're doing business because they know, like, and trust the individual. Did that answer your question? Awesome. <laughs> she gave you the thumbs up. All, All right, right, Ashley. 
You have the floor. Hey, Ashley. Hey, uh, well, you basically answered the question because I was going <clears> to, <throat> well, not as far as the business page versus the personal, but um, I've really never used LinkedIn um, uh, for notary. So I was just trying to figure out how you do it. Like um, you say adding value. So making posts about um, what like did, did you know how to do notary or giving tips and advice to people? Um what do you mean when, as far as giving value? Yeah, great question. So first, let me, I'll reiterate the 80-20 rule. 80% of it is you interacting with other people. And that could mean that you're just liking their posts. Mm. That could mean that um, people in your network are posting, they're sharing information, commenting. Liking is one thing, the heart, the love, the like, whatever it is. But when you go a little deeper and you make a comment that just says, hey, this really touched me, this was a great article or whatever it might be, just a little bit of activity. The way LinkedIn works, you're going to, the, the people on that page see all that activity. So it just shows you interacting and adding value to that. And then the 20% value that you're going to be bringing to the table could be any number of things. First, uh, you're going to want to, I'm big into sharing your passionate journey. Like we're all here, mostly the people who follow me, most of the people who follow Liz, we're in this because we love people. We love helping people for on whatever level it might be. So if you share that passion, whether it's you drove 150 miles to help somebody today or you swung by a Starbucks and you started the chain, of uh, people buying coffee or whatever it might be. That stuff is what people relate to. So you can share that kind of stuff. And then on top of that, you can share in your particular state, state laws are changing all the time. Maybe ID expiration laws have changed. Maybe there's some COVID stuff regarding IDs or the secretary of state or something that kind of ties in even loosely to notary work, you can start sharing that kind of stuff and you, be, you establish yourself as a, an expert notary in your area. And that's what you can start posting. And it's not, it's not selling. It's not, hey, I'm a notary. I'm here 24 hours a day if you need me. You can do that every now and then, but you want to deliver value. You want to help people in whatever they might be in life. You're just you're just delivering value and you're, it's, it's like floodgates are open, no holds barred. I'm just delivering value. I'm not holding anything back. That is what people respond to right now. And they're going to remember you because of that, or they're going to follow you. They're going to start uh, listening to you when you're talking. And then when they need a notary, they're going to call you because people only need a notary when they need a notary, but they're going to remember this information. Right. Okay. Um, another question about um, adding different services to um, um, like fingerprinting. Do you, are you familiar with that? And is that worth getting involved in as far as um, adding the fingerprint service? That is a great question. And yes, in, uh, in, so it, it depends on the state that you're in because it can be uh, regulated differently. Mm -hmm. That can be a very lucrative add-on. And if you decide to do that, it actually kind of ties into our notary work. And this ties into anything. When you're talking about LinkedIn or social media, any extra services that you're doing, you want to tell a story that blends this all together. LinkedIn gives you a great way to do that in the narrative, but you can do that on your website, whatever it is. So you can blend that together. But yes, fingerprinting can be extremely lucrative. Which state are you in, Ashley? Texas. Yeah. The you might great some, state of Texas. <laughs> the great state of Texas. You can have some great opportunities there. For sure. Thank you. All yeah, right. We have Michael with the hand raise, and then we have some uh, uh, some people in the chat. Yeah. You so, tell me. What's Michael? What's, yes. Good, good evening. Can right. you hear me? Sure can. Sure can. I, I have to ask because I had to come. I had to come. I had to come back in. Come back home from a trip and put my computer back together. Um, I am a brand new student of yours on on, on your Coach Me uh, platform, 
I just signed up the other day. All right. Uh, so I'm going to get an opportunity to, to, to talk to you. But one of my question right now, it goes along with the LinkedIn and, and as well as the full social media platform. Uh, is it necessary? Would it be necessary for me to update? I know, it's, I know it's necessary to update LinkedIn, but should I be up? Should I be updating my old Facebook fan page, or should I eliminate it? Should I? You know, I mean, I mean is, is Facebook itself still lucrative enough in this in this forum? And also, would I need an, an additional website? Ah, great questions. Okay, so for Facebook, um, I would say Facebook is probably number two as far as driving business because, again, you can share your passionate journey. And what I, my, in my experience, I would post where I was going, what I was doing, you know, my Starbucks coffee, my delicious chicken fried steak breakfast, whatever it was. Your dog. My dogs, yeah, <laughs> all of that. So, and what that did is that implanted into people's brains that I was a notary that loved what I did. And over time, and it was a very short period of time, anytime anybody posted, hey, I need a notary, I got tagged like 36 times. Yes. In it, because people saw that that's what I did and I was proud of it and I loved it. So I think Facebook can be very lucrative on the personal page and of course on the business page as well. So in, on Facebook, if you have a personal profile, you can have unlimited business pages. So I would mm -hmm. highly recommend both when that comes to that. And then as far as the website goes, if, you, uh, if, if you're going to be a loan signing agent, um, a website is not necessary for success. I think it's a good professional idea for branding your business, especially if you're looking for escrow direct business because an escrow officer might Google you. They might say, who is this person? Are they legit? Is this somebody I can count on? And if they Google your name and your website comes up, you're in control of the narrative. They see what you want them to see. And I think that's really powerful. How, if And then if you are planning to be into general notary work or specialty notary work, then absolutely, you have to have a website. That is the future. And even if you're going into remote online notarization, if you're going into any, anywhere we're going right now, search engine optimization is going to be the key to your success and you have to have a web presence to do that. Now, when I say website though, that very well could be just a, one of the free Google pages. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you have to have a digital presence because that's gonna be the key to your success. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for being here. All right, you wanna tackle the chat? Yeah, um, anything you, I'm not really following it. Oh, okay, otherwise. okay. Well, <laughs> um, marriage notary, I need you just to unmute. You got a lot to say. Let me find her. Can you hear me? Oh, there you oh, are. There you go. <laughs> Hi. <Yes. laughs> so I had to I had to go into my audio settings. I have a, a blue parrot uh, wireless, and I hadn't dealt with the wireless headset, noise canceling headset in a while. And it has two functions. It has the headset, and then it has the hands free or whatever. So I had to change some audio well we no can problem. hear you fine so on uh, some uh, marcy b asked a question of what if we already have a linkedin with our current main job should we list notary public lsa position first she's planning on transitioning to full-time over the next year okay so i think that's a really great question and it's a very personal decision mm -hmm. um and you have you know you have to balance your situation and your relationships. If you think that posting your notary business first is gonna damage or jeopardize your uh, full-time position, then put it second. But the way LinkedIn works is you can list actually quite a few different positions or titles or whatever you want to express in your title box. 
but I would absolutely encourage, no matter which order you decide to put it, put it in there. Because, well, number one, you're, remember that your network, your network and who you were before, every position you've ever held is going to carry forward to this business. Right. So absolutely put it in there. Okay. Um, the marriage notary, you said, don't connect with everybody. Choose wisely. You want to um, elaborate on that? Sure. <laughs> so on a daily basis, I mean, as you build your LinkedIn profile, you're going to get, and some of the people might be local, but they have, you know, they're, I get a lot of insurance agents and no knock against insurance agents because I at one point had my, had my insurance license, but you they send you a connection request, and this isn't just to insurance agents, this is to whatever field they might be in. And as soon as you accept that that connection request, they've got something in your inbox. And it's just, well, <laughs> of like, course, no, that's just like, <laughs> but it's automatically sent for when you actually accept it. And I'm like, and they're they're from the top, from the get go, selling their business. And I'm like, wow, that's yeah. just that's not nice. That. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up too. And we talk about that a lot in the book because that is the, the number, number one, it's lazy marketing guys right. to you're, you're skipping the relationship part of the whole business and we're surrounded by it. So we think, oh, well, that's what everybody else is doing. We should do it. It's a huge mistake. And I, lo I love that you brought up insurance agents because that does happen a lot. It also happens with people who have a title of business development manager, a regional business development manager in the title that you will get inundated as you're building this. And we're thinking, oh, the bigger the network we have, the better we have. And in LinkedIn in particular, I encourage you to get really protective of your network. This is literally a diamond mine for you. It's not even gold, it's diamonds or whatever's more valuable than diamonds. This is it. Be particular about who you build a relationship with. There's a lot of people doing LinkedIn wrong and you have the opportunity to do it right here. And if you want to build relationships, be authentic and don't sell. It's that whole analogy we use in the, in the book and I've been using it for years. You don't ask somebody to marry you on the first date. You gotta let that grow and cultivate and see if you're a good fit. See if you like them, see if they like you, and then you let it kind of emerge out of that. Then you ask for their business, but you don't do it on the first date. And that's what, um, and I'm, what is your name, the marriage consultant? You're on mute still, sorry. Yeah. Talking to me? Yes, yeah. I am. What would you okay. okay, I was talking um, to, I, okay, what was the question? <laughs> what was What's your name? name? <laughs> so hard to what is it <laughs> sunita sunita thank you oh sunita it's great to see you i see you on social media all the time yes yeah, nice to see you too sunita leak yeah. so i need to change my name on the I, and i can do that now i can change it to oh my, yeah i see name. it by sunita it just wasn't it doesn't show up all the time i see it thank you so much <laughs> for that but that's a, that's really great point because um if you if you take nothing away from today, it's don't sell yourself in the first DM on LinkedIn. You will like, and I do it all day, every day. I immediately unconnect when somebody sells or if their first message is, hi, I'd like to do the pitch. I mean, they're pitching left and right in that. And that's just not how it's done. Just because 90% of people do it, it's not the right way to do it. Remember that just because it's online doesn't mean it's not a human connection. We're human beings back here. We want to be treated like a human being. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Rosemary says, I'm the owner of an insurance agency and I want to know if I should just add my notary business as an add-on service at my insurance agency or should I get an LLC for the notary business and keep them separate? Great question. I'm not a tax consultant or an attorney, so I'd recommend you get really professional advice for that. What I will say is, though, 
add-on service could be a completely other uh, revenue stream for you. I think it could work under the same LLC, of course. I think you can find a way to make that work. Uh, I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but get the professional advice you need. What I would uh, uh, just offer is that you don't have to think of it as an, and I don't know if you're thinking about it this way, but you don't have to think of it as an add-on, like a free value add necessarily. Mm -hmm. It might be just another service that you cross promote. I personally believe that the notary business, when done correctly, meaning that you're absolutely professional, we know what our boundaries are, can be what I call the notary funnel. And it can introduce you to everybody you would ever need to meet or know to fill any business, whether it's insurance, real estate, uh, car sales, anything that you're going to do. Because our main responsibilities are to expertly perform the duties that we have been paid to do and lay the foundation for a relationship that is going to last beyond one single transition or transaction. When we do that, then you have the opportunity to add value continually throughout the year and cross sell, cross sell them anything you'd like to do. And insurance is a great fit for this. Thank you so much, Bill, for that uh, response. And really, it wasn't a legal question. It was just I was trying to navigate um, in my mind, okay, should I have this as an add-on business or should I just kind of do the notary thing separately? And um, uh, thank you to the young lady who uh, mentioned about insurance agents DMing people because I never do that. That's always a bad practice. So um, not all of us insurance agents are bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so true. Um, you know, this is a relationship business. And so whenever I'm training the agents that work for me, I always tell them this is a relationship business. And people really, you know, insurance is a commodity. Mm -hmm. People buy us. If they like us, then they will do business with us. So you don't have to oversell. Yes. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for that uh, comment. And I recently did order your book. Um, so I am making my way through that very valuable information. Um, new to the notary game. I haven't had my first signing as of yet, uh, hoping to get that. I have completed my NNA as well as the notary to pro. So hoping to get my feet wet real soon. Thanks. Awesome. So I'm awesome. sure you will. I love that. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, Stacy from Texas, I'm unmuting you so you can ask your question about Ron. Hi. Hello Hi. there camera on um it was a monsoon here today so i got a little wet um i have okay so i tread very lightly when i ask this question because i don't want anyone to feel obligated to play favorites of any kind but i'm really having a hard time with figuring out the platform that the platform that would work for me so when you're looking at the different platforms, do you have any advice for what to look for in a platform? Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it is, it's a tough decision, but you, you got to think about what your vision for your business is. And for most of us, we chose this business because we want to be in, independent. We don't want to be employees. We, we want some flexibility. So the most, important uh, the most important question in my perspective is, does the platform allow me to market and build my own business and bring my own customers? And I know it's, for many, it just seems like, oh, I thought every platform does that. And that's just not the case. It is growing, it's expanding, and it's changing. But right now there's, and there are a lot more, platforms coming in. Notarize, I think, is even introducing a, uh, a variation of this too. So I think we're getting closer to having a lot more options to choose from, but Doc Verify and Sinex, Sign IX, are the two most popular that I've heard of. Uh, and Sign IX wins for customer service. Okay. Especially in Texas. And I even have a, I'm, in development, I've been in development of a platform for the last three years. We have one coming out in Texas uh, very shortly as well. 
Oh, good to know. Yeah. Okay. I, it's close. just hard in Texas, and I don't know what the rules and such are in other states, but in Texas, you have to pick your flat platform. You have to have your digital um, stamp and certificate prior to even applying. So I did all that with the platform, but in order to change platforms, I have to notify the state that I'm changing. Yes. So I just don't want to keep changing. I want to find the one that I think is right for me and then change it. Yeah, that's, um, it's tough. So if I have another piece of advice in Texas in particular, it would be to choose a digital certificate that um, can be used in multiple platforms. Some of the platforms offer them, but you can only use them on their platform. So it like binds you to that platform. So mm -hmm. it's, it's tough because you almost have to play around with it a little bit. Some people love Doc Verify. Some people call it Doc Terrify. Some <laughs> people love Sign X and they, they swear by it. And then there's these lots of smaller startups that are becoming notary centric. They're like all these big tech companies came in and they started doing it and they had no idea what the notary experience was. So then no, some notaries came up and said, no, this isn't cool. We're going to set one up for us based on our experience. So all of these things are starting to emerge right now. And that's really exciting. It's an exciting time for the industry. But it can also be overwhelming because there's too many options. But you have to dance around a little bit. You might have to experiment a little bit. So give yourself some grace and flexibility for that too, to just find the right fit for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And thank all of you. Yeah. Thank you, Stacy. Okay. Um, Lori, Lori Hyde from Texas, you had your hand up. No, ma'am, I did not. Uh, yeah. Okay. All oh. right. Um, I think, Ashley, did you get your question answered? She listens, answered you about the platforms. Do you want Bill to go into detail about it? Okay. Um, Michael says, do you know when California might allow Ron? So California is like the, the major holdout. And I think it's, it's probably within five years. Um, but other than that, I couldn't tell you. But it's, I would say it's definitely coming with, my guess is within five years. Okay, Bill, so your 80-20 rule. So like, give an example, when you get on LinkedIn and you're trying to do the 80-20, he says he might move to Texas. Come on <laughs> down. <laughs> how, like when you're on there, how many profiles do you say you get on and interact with a day? I think this could de depend. Okay. Um, for me, the way I said it was time period. I would do 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes getting on, interacting with whatever happened to pop up. And then I would move on. Sometimes I would do 15 minutes all on one platform. Sometimes I would say, well, I've got a signing at 6 a.m. So I got to do all my platform, all my Facebook, LinkedIn, everything in 15 minutes. Okay. So I work better with... Um, time periods like that, but some people might say they might work differently. So mm -hmm. that's what I would say to that. You lost me at, you had a signing at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now that that is how I changed my business was being available. And I had to train my escrow officers too, because they said the same thing. They're like, 6 a.m. I'm not even out of bed. But I would tell them, like, give me the 5 a.m., 6 a.m. I'm not even kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And they thought I was joking. Uh -huh. um, but then they would have people that were like, do you have a signing available at 6 a.m.? And I got this crazy notary who said he'd do them at 6 a.m. And uh, the most popular ones that I've ever had were doctors, doctors who can't take time out of their schedule. And uh, over here in Arizona, we call them DPS officers, Department of Public Safety, Highway Patrol. They they have a pretty tight schedule, and they 
they get certain amount of time off and they want to spend that with their family. They don't right. want to take that off to sign documents. So I done tons of those signings, five, 6 a.m., Sometimes by 9 a.m., I've done more signings than more than loan signing agents do in a full day because I'm willing to do that. And I, at the time when I was in full hustle mode, I was willing to work late at night too. Now this is like, I'm, I'm ready to wind down and go to bed. So this is late for oh, me. Oh, this but. is late for you. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Very late. Practically midnight for me, right. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Tia, you're up. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, ma'am. Okay, perfect. Um, I just wanted to know, do you have a signing service or are you planning to start a signing service? Yeah, I've had a signing service for years. Okay. Uh, it's, it, it's either William Soroka Notary Public or Notary Coach. I'm slowly converting everything just to the same brand, but um, yes, I do. I use, my, I use my own students at Sign and Thrive for the most part. I give them first dibs and then I roll over to Carol Ray's Notary Pro. And then if I can't find anybody available, we roll on to signingagent.com. Okay. I was just wondering, just thinking that, you know, because this business depends on us to, you know, go out and do the work, like at what, just thinking long-term, like how you would automate it or just make it work for when you are not able, I guess, any longer or no longer want to go out and, and do loan signings. Yeah, that's so for me, I was really resistant to it because I really built up making a signing company to be this big ordeal uh, where I'd have to have like an LLC in every state. I'd have to know all these notaries in all these states. It's not, it's easier than it seems. So if I had one, one regret, it would be that I didn't start earlier and I didn't, uh, you know, I resisted it for so long. Mm -hmm. It's still, it's a lot of responsibility. And when you take pride in your business, which I obviously do, um, the, it's the hardest part of the job too, because you're relying on other people to perform to your right. staff. So it is hard, it's difficult in that way, but it's also very easy. We have so many resources. We have all these databases. So we know pretty much every certified loan signing agent at our fingertips. So we can fulfill orders everywhere. Um, and how it happened for me, it was really organic. You know, my clients kept asking, they're like, hey, we got a signing in Minnesota. Can you help us? And I'm like, no, I, I don't know what all that is. And I pushed and pushed and pushed. And finally, what I did, what I ultimately did is I went to a signing company that I worked for and I said, hey, I got my, this client who's giving me all this business. Can you help me out? She's like, oh, yeah. So she gave <laughs> me like 10 bucks a signing and she would take care of everything. And, I was, and one day I saw what she was doing. She was just jumping on the signingagent.com, randomly calling a notary to fulfill this order and making at that point, it was a hundred dollars per signing. And I was like, and the light bulb went off. <laughs> it was a, it was a lot easier than I thought. Now there's still a lot of pressure because of the, what I just talked about, but also financial, you got to have, you know, your response, you got to pay people on time. So there's a lot more to it, but if you're looking for a passive income stream, and if you love to help people make their own dreams come true, it can be a really awesome avenue for you. Good deal. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Great question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Stacy, um, based uh, back on the social media post and she said, you know, use the scheduling feature, you know, so that we, that we can get up and get those 6 a.m. signings, I guess. <laughs> um, and then Tamara or Tamara, I'm so sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, she says, just to clarify, you branded and built your business by being an early bird that caught all the words all the words words worms worms oh we're <laughs> yeah. sorry well Bad so the thing. early bird does get the worms but okay so let's dive into that a little bit what happened was um and this is with escrow direct in particular the i got a lot more purchase signings mm. not necessarily the refinances i mean i sure got tons of those but 
With purchase signings, they're a little bit different. They hold them tighter because they have to be done right. Sometimes they're closing the same day. So if you're doing a signing at 6 a.m., there's a really good chance they can still sign the same day. So what happened was the, you know, the escrow officer was like, well, if he does sign at six, then I can get the paperwork in. I can get that out to the lender by 10. We can have funding in the wire by one. So it can happen. So I started getting more signings. So the escrow officers would say, tell the borrower, if you can sign at 6 a.m., we can get this done today. And that got me more business. Mm. And that made me more of a hero to the escrow officer. So it made other loan signing agents, and in this particular case, in these two particular cases, their huge company they were working with, uh, just kind of fall away. They weren't, weren't important anymore because I was the one who could get stuff done. That's how it made me more business. All right, let's see. Uh, Don's saying that she gets um, emails daily about paying 150. Um, but there's a sign up fee to sign up. Someone said that's spam. Um, are there any plats that are free? Play oh sorry, places. I'm sorry, Don. You said okay, so are there any places that are free? And hi, mom. Yeah, Welcome to I, the party. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> she finally here. Oh now, who says she finally here? Look, I've been out making you, my money. You no, know, you I, know that was me. <laughs> I've been out making my money. <laughs> Hey, Liz. Everybody wanted to be crazy today. <laughs> hey, so I, just had to get, I just had to get a little crazy with a couple of them. Mm. But I'm here. And I was trying to get on on my phone. I but saw. it didn't work. It didn't work. So, And then I just turned it off and I said, I'll be there at the end. Yeah, hey! Oh, Lord. Hey. Yeah, me, and Sunita, hey, me and Sunita saw you pop on. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. Okay. So um, what Dawn had asked, she asked two great questions. Um, I think she was meaning platforms on there about free platforms. I don't know of any free, real true free um, remote online notarization platforms, if that's what you were talking about, because there are, it's, and because I have a new, platform coming out, I know that it's very expensive to validate ID and things like that. So I don't see that ever being a possibility. There still might be some real budget friendly ones coming out soon. Um, the other question that you have, I just want to touch on these emails that you guys get about these directories. And if you pay, sometimes it's $49 a year, sometimes it's $300 a year, whatever it is. The general rule, guys, is if you have to pay to play, you don't play. There are plenty of free directories out there, hundreds of free signing companies to sign up with to get business. You, your services are needed. There's no reason to pay for those. There are some directory uh, exceptions to that, like Notary Rotary, Notary Cafe, 123 Notary. If you pay their premium, most notaries get a little bit of a return on their investment from those, but you should not have to pay. And if you're looking for where to find all these signing companies, you've got to check out notarireviews.org because that is the best $125 a year you will pay. You will have a whole list of 750 companies that you can uh, build relationships with and get more business. Did that help? Sunita, I'm gonna need you just to uh, get off this mute. So I have this kid in the back, can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you. So I have my youngest in the background messing with me and saying, do you love me? And so, <laughs> but you can't hear him because I have a noise canceling headset and I, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> And he's trying to make me laugh. He's trying to make me do something different. Okay. So, um, so, okay. So what I did was, because I signed up through for four different, well, I looked, I was looking for something else to do when I started my mobile notary venture. And 
I came upon this website called ratracerebellion.com and they have many different customer service jobs. They have, and it's still in existence. And I saw mobile notaries. That's where I saw the information. And it had four companies listed. I said, there's got to be more than this. So I, like I said, hit the nail on the head and just went on Google. I went on Yahoo. Yahoo search was big then. <laughs> um, and I just... <laughs> Now it's just Google. Google has taken over, y'all. Right. Um, and I searched. I I did matching, so I was in Notary Cafe, and I was on One Two Three Notary, and I was on SigningAgent.com, and I was matching companies, uh, so that when later on down the line, which I didn't know it then, but later on down the line, when those scam companies came into my email inbox, and it was blank 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 dot com, I'm like, yeah, that's just straight straight spam. Uh, you you learn what companies are at reputable and which are not. And then you also have to, over time, scrub through those companies because good companies go bad and then bad companies become better. So That's so true. And that's a really good point. I think that's also why I really like notary reviews too, because they're reviewed by our peers, other signing agents, you know, so you know which companies to avoid, which companies to sign up with. It's not 100% guaranteed, but it's a really good starting point. And if you haven't dialed into that, you should definitely check that out. And then to Sunita's point too, do your due diligence. You know, if you want it, it's here. This is the, there's never been a better time to be in this business. So even though we're talking about signing up with all these signing companies and all these other opportunities, get dialed in, build relationships, follow up, keep yourself top of mind, you will grow this business and you don't have to have experience. Every day I talk to I talk to people who have zero experience in this business and they hit they've just got gumption to go in, they stay in touch. They're like, hey, I'm a note a signing agent. Hey, I'm still a signing agent. <laughs> hey, do you need me? I can be helpful. You know, they're bringing value to it. They're like and they're knocking on doors, whether that means picking up the phone, emailing, or literally knocking on doors, which is really hard to do in COVID. But they're building those relationships and they're knocking it out of the park right now. Okay, and it's notaryreviews.org? Yes, that's okay. Carrie Rivera's site, yep. Okay, someone had asked that. Guys, and if you're gonna apply there, because it's application process, you gotta have your ducks in a row. And here's what you'll find. If you don't have your ducks in a row, then you know that you've got more to learn. If you're not dialed into a training system that's teaching you how to not only do this work, because it's really important to know how to do this work. That's, that's really important. And then you've also got to know the marketing side of this too. You got to know that you got to set up profiles. Um, you've got to have if you're not going to do Facebook, you might have a Google My Business, something that shows that you are a professional loan signing agent and you're serious about this work because Carrie's going to demand that of you to join her network or community in there. So you want to get your ducks in a row, have your profiles in. All those uh, directories I just mentioned, they all have free versions. So you get your free versions out there. The more exposure you have, the better. And that's called search engine optimization. You want your name out there. You want your location out there. So when people are searching for you, because here's how they're doing it, notary near me. They're just typing that into Google. And the more chances that your name is going to be at the top of that list, the better you're going to do at this. Okay. Andrea? Hi there. So Hi. I have been um, a long signing agent for a little over a year now in Maryland. And um, I'm, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard spot trying to figure out whether I should quit my full-time job, which is, is a really good job, or just keep doing loan signings for part-time. And mm -hmm. so I guess I'm concerned because I don't know what the market looks like when it looks bad. So what... Have you been in it long enough where you kind of can get a feel for what's going to happen or do you know what it looks like and how to just keep work going even when the market looks bad? 
Yes, I have. And yes, I'm happy to do that. Um, so <laughs> when it's when interest rates go up even a little bit, you're going to start to see an impact. So the, the thing that you want to be aware of is that you want to start diversifying your business and building relationships. The problem that happens when we're in a market like we're in right now is that people, we're almost like high on drugs of the good business right now. We're like, oh, life is good. There's no, the phone's just gonna keep ringing and dinging. I just, I just can't get enough business. What happens when it's, uh, the interest rate goes up is that starts to slow down and you start to panic. So I can tell you what you're going to regret. You're gonna regret not staying in touch with your signers you're going to regret not staying in touch and building a relationship with the people who hire you. And you're going to regret relying 100% on signing companies. And the reason for that is signing companies are 90% refinance business. And when interest rates go up, the refinance market is where you're going to feel it. So if you really want to create a business that's sustainable, it's going to last no matter what, then you absolutely have to start building relationships. If it's a signing company, if it's an escrow direct, whatever it is, with purchase business. Because people are always going to buy and sell business. People are always moving. That's always going to be happening. Refinances might slow down, but people are always going to be moving. And then the other way to create sustainability is additional revenue streams. So that's the general notary website. If you haven't tapped into that, it can be lucrative in most states. You can find a way to make considerable income in general notary work or the wedding officiants or, or uh, home inspection, the, not the home inspections, but field inspections, whatever it might be, to supplement and kind of fill in those gaps when there is a little dip in anything in, in any of those. Okay, thank you. You bet. Was that you, Liz? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I, I, I all in my training, I always tell people that this business, this lending, this mortgage business, having been in it for 30 plus years, it is a cyclical business. Yeah. It is going to go down. You have to diversify. You may not be doing a whole lot of the general notary work, the fill inspection, so forth and so on, right now when things are so lucrative in loan signings. But you definitely want to get your foundation down so that when you have to move to that, you can do that with ease. Because I can assure you, this market, we are in a feast right now. But it is going to change. When will it change? Who knows? And with the economy being what it is right now, there's absolutely no way of knowing when it's going to change. The other thing that I wanted to, to share is that anybody basically can get into this business now. However, whether you're doing it part-time or whether you're doing it full-time, you have got to be trained on what to do. Now, a lot of people say, I can't afford all that training. I know I can do this myself and that's fine. I even did a video out there on do it yourself, how you can do it yourself. But for those who want to quick start their business, you need to get yourself into a good training class. And of course, I think I have, I have the best Okay, Bill got some good stuff out there. Okay, I know Bill got some good stuff. But I have to say, Tamika, yes. you can, you, you can, you, what do they call it? You can back me up there. We have excellent training programs. We do. If, if it is the right style of training for you. You do your research on the different trainings, uh, trainers, Mine is live on Zoom. Well, it's on Zoom because of COVID. And it's not pre-recorded or anything like that. You're in the class where you ask your questions and, and we take care of those questions. 
I'm starting something new this year. Anyone who takes my class, you get free mentoring for 60 days after the class. After that 60 days, there's a fee. And the reason I put 60 days on it, come on guys, if you get your training, you get your commission, you get your uh, signing agent certification, and you sit on it for six months, I mean, for uh, 60 days, you're not doing anything to get it going, you're not serious. So I will do the mentoring uh, for 60, up to 60 days after each one of my classes, just to get you on your way. So I say to you, and I think I saw something in the chat about how do you pay for these classes? You, you do your research before you start paying. You decide what's going to fit you better. You know, do you want that the self-paced program where you can just go back and look at it all the time? Or do you want the hands-on classes where you've got somebody like me jumping all over the place, but giving you some good stuff? And um, also, I do a lot of videos for you guys. Those are free. Well, I don't want you just to go look at my free videos. I need you in my classes so I can stop. I can I can come out of these streets like I've been in the street signing all day today. So I need y'all to do that. And I love referrals. If you've already been to class, refer a friend. Now, Bill, I know I kind of went off off I went off off, off whatever we were talking about. You went on a this market. This what this market is going to do. Yes. This market is going to change. Make your money now, but don't spend it all at one time. Learn how, if you're going to make that $100,000, and I showed you how on a video also, you're going to make that $100,000, you better put some aside. You know how they say, put it aside for a rainy day? I'm not going to call it necessarily a rainy day because the sun could be shining, but your pocketbook could be empty. So, <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do is to establish that plan up front so that you're going to save some of that $100,000 that you're going to make. And then it's going to help you start to build your business with your general notary work or your field inspections or whatever you're going to do. The other thing, while this we are in a feast, and you can take, like somebody would say, uh, they took 10 loan signings in one day. That's awesome, but how, did you do a good job? Because what you want to be able to do is once we're out of the feast, you will have done a good, thorough job for the people you're working with. So that when we get down to just a few signings, they're going to remember you because you've done an excellent job for them. But if you've gone out there and your work has been sloppy, they may keep using you for now, but when the business slows down, you may not be top of their mind anymore. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. Yeah, yeah let me, a, let me let help you off that. Point, and I love that because. I was just going to say I was helping her okay. off her soapbox. But anyway, <laughs> Andrea, <laughs> you know, she. Uh, now, you know what? You know what? I, Inez must not be on here and Bunny must not be out on here because they nope. told you about being snippy with me. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, I, I see your pretty baby behind you. At, uh, um, someone else, you, you would ask the question about, we're going back to your question about uh, should you quit your job and do loan signings? I'm going to talk, I'm going to just say something about that and then I'm going to read what's in the chat. Um, if you can do loan signings and keep your full-time job, if this pandemic has taught us anything we need all the money you know so multiple streams of income if you can make it work i say stay at it as long as you can you know we we need those those chochos um and then someone else said price medical benefits disability insurance without a traditional job you know and see if if it works for you um lori lori says uh how do we find information about uh, the other options like field inspections, marriage, all that. Where, where do we go for that information? I know we had someone on uh, before, I think like the second to the last YouTube when she's talking about field inspections on our YouTube channel. 
But um, Bill or Liz, do you have any suggestions on where we could get information if we want to, you know, do field inspections, marriage, all that good stuff? Well, if you want to do the marriage, uh, Sunita is a good source. Sunita, aren't you a good source to tell people how to get into that? In fact, Sunita said she was going to come on and do a, a, a uh, Zoom for us, but then she ghosted me. No. You see me just bust you out, Sunita? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I think on that day I had a, a ceremony because I have people who call me and I, they're getting married like at 11 o'clock at night. I promise you. <laughs> Sunita, that was six months ago. You, you, you could have called me back. I'm just saying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, Sunita, uh, you, even if you're not the one to, to kind of help people along, I bet you you can give us some information yes. that, you know, where we can go to get that. Now, uh, the other thing, the field inspection, look for Jamie. Jamie, um, it's under, under one of our YouTubes. Her name is Jamie Smith Liggins. She's got some really good information, and she, uh, she does classes on how to do the field inspections. Now, I'm going to go back to uh, Andrea Doolin. Yeah, uh, weren't you the one who made me uh, open my Facebook back up? That was me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Jesus, but I haven't seen you in a while. Now, it's let me, let... been a while, but I'm glad you didn't kick me out of the group. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she, she made a good point, and I, because I, it was just going to be for my people who've been to class or whatever the case may be. But uh, what Tamika just said is true. You keep your job if you can do your loan signing, you know. Now, I have a different take on that. And yes, uh, you, I, we saw that baby behind you. So you've got to, to be mindful of that. However, you also look like you're real young. If you don't start now doing something for yourself, when? And it's scary, but you got to have a plan. So while you're working that job, that nine to five, think about how you can create a plan to get out of that job. You know, figure out how much money you need to make, including that insurance. See, here's the thing. We rely on these nine to fives. I did it for 35 years, I'm sitting in somebody's corporate office getting my little paycheck. Well, they run you into the ground, and then when they're done with you, they step over you like you're a damn dead body. Lord have mercy. So, if you want to do something for yourself, which I think we all need to look at being, being entrepreneurs, being self-sufficient, if you can figure out how to do it, Make sure you've got a plan to get you where you want to be. Determine how much money you need to make, how much you're making on that job now, how much you need to make in order to be, let's say, 30% above what you're making on that job. And give yourself three years. Say in three years, I'm stepping out of Mr. Corporate America and I'm going to become an employer. It's a mind, a lot of it is a mindset and a plan. But like I said, girl, you better listen to Tamika because <laughs> I'm almost 70 years old and I got two incomes coming in that I ain't got to hit a lick and snake at. And she doesn't have anybody's kids over there. <laughs> got no kids. But I regret that I was not smart enough to do something for myself when I was younger. Right. I regret that. And I encourage that little girl of mine, um, for those of you who don't know, that's my daughter. Take is my daughter. I encourage when her every on, single I day. Said, Hi, mom. Oh, you did. <laughs> I encourage her every single day to keep building, keep building her empire. She's going to be very, very successful because about 85% of the time she listens. 
You got to give me 15% to do what I want to do. <laughs> and now she can add and she can, she can subtract. I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we we are coming to a close. I do you have anything that you would like to? You know, Liz came in uh, late, and then she want to take over, you know, and run us run us at, over the hour. But we will let her since it's her show. <laughs> it ain't my show. It's y'all show. <laughs> I love that. I'm just a facilitator. Well, you know, I love what you were just saying, Liz, and I love that you're advocating for doing something for yourself because that's extremely important. And that really, when I was thinking about what I want to convey across here, I made some notes and it, it piggybacks on exactly what Liz says. Have a plan. Start executing that plan. That's where most people forget. They just dream and they're making plans. Right now we're in the, we're in January, so everybody's dreaming big. The key is in the execution, but then also be flexible because you're going to get punched in the mouth, just like Mike Tyson says. Everybody got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Yes. And you're going to yes. get punched in the mouth. And you got to roll with those punches, and you got to adjust and pivot and do everything, and then keep moving. Your goal, your vision, your end game might change. You might have to shift directions, but you got to keep moving. That's the key. If you want this business to work, and this is the big takeaway, guys, no matter what you're looking for, if you're looking for an excuse to quit or fail, or if you're looking for a reason or a way for this business to succeed, you will find it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. That was awesome. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us this evening. Our classes have started back. Notary 101 is this weekend, um, Saturday, 8 to 1. If you um, haven't taken that class, please consider taking it. And then we go on to uh, Loan Document Review 1. Um, with the following weekend. So please think about uh, taking our classes. Like Liz said, um, check out our YouTube channel. All our videos are on there and you'll see how she teaches. It might not be for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun in our classes and we, we learn as well as having fun. So thank you all. This has been awesome. This was a great way to start the year. I'm so excited about everything that's coming for this two, 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 uh, excuse me, 2021. This is amazing. So hope everyone has a wonderful evening and we'll see you later. All right. Thank no, you so thank much you. for me. Thank you. No, thank Love you so much. With. Yeah, thank we'll talk you. Soon. All right, for sure. All right, we'll see you guys. Bye thank bye. You. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe below. If you are in need of a social media manager, contact Tamika Harris of Pretty and Branding.